The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the um, first D-Link webinar of, of 2021. Um, so a belated happy 2021 to everyone. I think that's probably the uh, the last time you'll hear that. Um, but we are back uh, as, as D-Link here to talk today about uh, an update to our surveillance portfolio. Um, with me, as always, is our technical pre-sales manager, Craig Kirby. Hello, everybody. And um, Craig, Craig's, Craig's excited about a chance to talk about something other than switches, aren't you, Craig? I am, yes. We still have to talk about switches, I'm afraid. But yes, at least we've got something to actually plug into them that's new. It's, yeah, it's Craig, cool. Craig let me know yesterday, very, very late, that we should put two slides in about switches just, just to make him comfortable. So there are, <laughs> um, but no, they're very relevant to the topic. So it was, um, it was, it was a good spot to, um, to include both of them, as you'll see as we go through. Um, so let's let's have a chat about the uh, surveillance portfolio and what we've done. Um, basically, D-Link's surveillance portfolio is, is designed to help SMB businesses. Um, we provide you a solution as interlinked multiple camera setups uh, to allow you the monitoring of spaces across a, a company property at the same time. The, the primary goal of, of any sort of surveillance system is, is to increase safety, deter theft, and to stop unauthorized access onto your property. So we was looking, doing some research for this. Um, burglary and theft actually fell in, in the UK across 2020, um, but with many offices still closed, um, premises and properties being made vacant all the time, people moving uh, lots of gear into storage, uh, the need for surveillance solutions is still high um, and, and, and it will remain high um, and, uh, until people start to get back to some semblance of normality, going back to offices, traveling around more. Um, and then that obviously creates its, its own need for different surveillance solutions. Um, one of the one of the underlooked uses of security cameras is with insurance claims. And, and that's something that's always um, high on companies' agendas, uh, whether, whether it's for actual thefts or burglaries, but it's also about um, workplace incidents, uh, car accidents that happen outside your offices. And it, it's, it's imperative in this day and age to, to have the facts and to be able to provide um, valuable footage um, that you can use to um, identify any perpetrators and keep those insurance premiums down, which um, um, I'm sure you'll be very well aware of um, as as we emerge from um, uh, the, the current recession, that's every penny counts. So um, anything that we can do um, to keep those insurance premiums down is, is, is well welcomed. So as, as, as I said, um, D-Link provides the, the total solution to video surveillance. Um, Craig, do you prefer the term IP surveillance to video surveillance? I know it's interchangeable, but... Um... It's mainly interchangeable. I think the reason is that uh, we, we as long as we get away from CCTV, I think everybody's <laughs> happy. Because um, no longer is it closed circuit anymore. It's not really right to use those sort of things. Yes, we can do an installation where cameras are tied to a couple of switches and those switches aren't tied to anything else. I suppose that is closed in a way, mm. but uh, yeah. I, IP surveillance is, is what we really should be saying because that's, that's what it really is. Yeah, sure. Um, um, so, so you can see here the, um, the, the dealing solution starts, well, at the start, as, as, as you very often should, uh, where we, we have an, an option, um, a variety of options there that you can base your network upon. So uh, we will sell you the switch, we will show you the access point, and we're also talking about central management, which we won't go into now, but we will um, get into in a little bit more depth later on in the webinar. Uh, we're going to be talking about the new fixed bullet and fixed dome camera models that we have. Um, and then also coming up very shortly, we do have a brand new NVR system, which I'm, I'm sure will be um, very, ha uh, bring, bring happiness to a lot of people out there. Um, because I, I don't think they've been upgraded for a little while, Craig. So it's, it's been quite a while. I mean, certainly for the last what, three years, I would have thought is wow. uh, when the last NVR probably came out. I'm pretty sure it was around the time I joined the company, funnily enough. 
So three, three years now. Pre predates me joining the company anyway. So any, anything that was around before me, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so here's, here's more of an, um, a classic architecture. So, so this is more like what an older, um, solution would, would, would look like, um, uh, Craig, do you want to look at this in a little bit more detail? Yeah. So, uh, we say it's an older solution. This is certainly what you would have been purchasing over the last three years. Um, to say what the actual topology hasn't changed, it's still IP surveillance, you still have a switch, you still have an MVR, and you still have the cameras, of course. However, some of that has been amalgamated. Some, some of it's been pushed into a couple of devices, so we can limit the amount of devices, but get more out of them. And that's, that's really what we're going to be looking at today. So this is, this is the older way. So uh, if you remember, Alan, we still, uh, up until recently, had our MVRs, which have dual bays, and one might have uh, one bay with a HDMI, and another one might be um, sort of a little bit of everything in, in one, and maybe a couple of ports for PoE. So what we're going to be looking at today is, is the improvement of all of these things. So kind of taking all of these nice features and pushing them into a, a single unit that's yeah. brand new uh, and, and up-to-date hardware-wise. Uh, likewise, we're looking at switches as well, uh, certainly switching. Uh, we've done very, very well over the last few years with our DGS-1210 series, which has been excellent for cameras. It's a nice one gigabit port across, so you might buy a 24-port um, DGS-1210, maybe a few gigabit uplinks on those of SFP, and certainly those are still very much used and sold today. However, uh, what we can bring to the table is something a little bit more dynamic. Mm. um for our for our devices uh, i don't want to spoil it until we see the slides but let's, <laughs> let's let's have a look at the new things that we can do now it, it's always tempting isn't it craig um <laughs> just just to say as well this uh, not everything on this slide is is still available available from d-link some of these have been replaced in terms of models but it is just an just um to show where we where we are and now we're going to show where we're yeah. going I and I think key, key to here, we've got we've got different areas as well. So we had area one and area two in that diagram, and, and you'll see that there's kind of a mishmash of different kind of cameras uh, and camera models to try and achieve what we're looking for. So obviously that would mean you'd have to have a different bracket for this one and another bracket for this one, and 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 yeah. making sure that you, you source all these devices and brackets is can be quite difficult actually. Yeah. Um, so so we're going to have a look at how that's improved now. Okay. Yeah, so we, we, we chose the uh, vertical example of, um, of, of, of a bank. It's sort of a typical display here, entrance lobby, seating area, and you've got your ATM machines, then you've got your, your, your back office meeting rooms, uh, there's a data center, and then you've got the, the kiosk desk there at the front. So um, we, we mapped out a, a, a solution here um, to give you ample coverage in in, in every single room um, of the <clears throat> of, of of the bank, uh, a nice uh, nucleus connect Wi-Fi six access point there, providing the uh, premises with with some fantastically fast Wi-Fi, and then good coverage in each area with um, a, just a, the, the full range of cameras. Um, so you've got the bullet cams there, you've got the um, you've got the dome cams with the motorized um, um, precision for, for an area which is um, uh, rather than at the lobby where you can get away with the fixed cameras pointing at the same position in the office, you probably want to be facing uh, more than one uh, in more than one way at the same time. So the motorized will take care of that better. Um, and then as, as Craig said, managed with the solution, there's, there's two options on there. So there was the the aforementioned NVR, which we slightly introduced on the first slide, but we'll talk about more about that later. And then there's also the upcoming DNH 200, which is an upgraded Nucleus Connect hub, which again, we'll talk more about later on in the webinar. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's really what we're, what we're looking to showcase here today. And especially in terms of the fact that we've got these access points that we've always done access points for, for a long time. We've always done software based access points, which are controlled by a piece of software. Hmm. Um, so this is where now we're kind of trying to bridge everything together. Certainly 
Uh, certainly, if you've, if you've ever watched a webinar that me and Alan have done before, we've always talked about Nucleus. Um, and certainly, we have our Nucleus Cloud products, which has been a big, a big growth for us. Um, but what has also grown on side of that is our, our Nucleus software. Um, again, we we'll, we'll, yeah. won't we'll spoil the slides, but uh, it's, it's very, very much a wireless segment that we are a part of. Um, and, and certainly are, is against a lot of our competition. Mm. And what we are now doing is we're improving that piece of software a lot this year. Um, I can't give too much away, but it <laughs> will be a big improvement. Certainly if you're in that captive portal environment, look forward to some really good changes that are coming uh, to try and bring it in line with our mm. cloud products. Um, and so very much this piece of software now is going into our hardware as well. We have a DNH 100, which is our, our small controller. So rather than having it installed on a PC, you would have it installed on this little white box. And then this is the improvement of that with DNH 200, which we'll, we'll take a look at and how it helps us. I'm, I'm sure those um, improvements are coming to a webinar um, soon. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely schedule something to talk about that stuff when we've got the full range of information. Um, the biggest, the biggest upgrade to the surveillance systems is isn't around the lens. Um, the lens is now a Sony Starvis lens, which um, probably means um, a bit more to people who who know stuff about cameras um, they've probably heard of this sort of lens before um, but what it basically means for our range is um, as you can see on this slide is massively improved um, night vision um, as one of the major um, major benefits uh, of the Starvis lens um, I'm, I'm not featuring all the benefits um, because they get very, very technical. Um, this was one of the more easy to explain, but even on here, um, there's, there's there's a lot of technical stuff that um, the, the average user either wouldn't understand or doesn't need to understand in order to set up a, a decent camera solution. Uh, but what the picture clearly shows is that with the star a Starvis lens, um, it's a back illuminated pixel technology, uh, it, it, it will give you a much better and clearer night vision picture. Um, it's something to do with how the, the back lit um, photo diode doesn't have any wires or any casing in front of it, which is what allows this, um, this, this massively improved picture that you can see on, on the screen here. Yeah, and I think what we're absolutely the key, if you take away anything from this webinar today, is that the reason for the improvement of the cameras is to improve the night vision piece yeah. mainly. And when we say night vision, what we're talking about is color night vision, which is not on the older range of cameras, color night vision. So think about what that means. In the past, we have high contrast. So you'll see lots of grays, like a gray scale. You might even see temperature readings and things like that. Certainly we have a temperature camera uh, that does that. But what we're talking about here is color night vision. So you're actually able to detect color at night time. And that's, that's a very big piece. The next, um, the next major improvement is HDR. Now, HDR is probably something that cinemaphiles like myself have heard of or have movies that incorporate HDR. So I can, I can clearly attest to the impact of, of HDR on some of the movies that, that I've watched um, at home. Um, basically, high dynamic range is, is a technique used in photography um, and uh, making films. Uh, that generates, um, sorry, that reproduces a greater range of luminosity than what is possible uh, with the standard techniques. Um, the example that you can see here, we've got HDR on and the luminosity that's coming from the sunlight at the front of what looks like a parking structure uh, that, is, that is completely dulled down so that you can have a clearer sight. And then on the flip side of that, you can see with HDR off, the luminosity really does shine through. Uh, and what, what, what the beauty of being able to have it on or off does is that it allows you to capture both light and dark regions in both modes um, so that you can achieve a higher, um, a higher visual, visual recognition performance. Sorry. Um, so 
uh, yeah, HDR on the cameras, it's, it, as, as Craig said, the, the night vision is fantastic and combine that with, with the HDR and we've really, really increased the performance of these cameras in dark areas, but also in dark areas where there is a light source, which um, I think is, is a big problem for people who have security solutions. Yeah, it's, it's quite important. And, and, and just to, to give an idea of how this works, basically what it'll do is it'll take multiple shots in any given moment. Um, yeah, so it'll look at the high contrast shots and it, it'll probably just turn down the contrast on that area. Yep. And it'll take the, the standard image that is, is for the rest of the picture, overlap those, and then modify the transparency so that they superimpose together. And then that creates uh, your image. So it's actually multiple images. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I, I don't know if you've if, ever used a mobile phone to take HDR. What you might notice is that when you when you click a click a photo, uh, it, it is slightly slower to take that photo than it would yeah. be if, with there's, HDR off. There's noticeable lag, isn't there, when you pan and zoom? That's right. It? Yes. And, and that that's the reason is because it's actually taking multiple images at the same time. Yeah. So it's very important that when you have a camera, certainly in IP surveillance, that the the processor and 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 everything is powerful enough to take those shots in any given moment very very quickly to perform this hdr function hmm. and that's an, again another reason why improved HDR, hdr is very important uh on the newer devices because they generally have more processing power and uh, certainly more um algorithms in terms of um, shrinking down the images hmm. um to for compression to to get this kind of image and still keep it running and, and recording to an mbr okay now, in, in terms of the megapixel upgrades themselves, um, basically each model has been improved. So the old models, the old one megapixel, three megapixel and five megapixel cameras are now being replaced by two megapixels, four megapixels and eight megapixels. So the two megapixel camera, that will be full uh, 1080 HD. The four megapixel camera is is a two K resolution, and the eight megapixel camera is four K. Four um, K is is becoming something of, of of a benchmark in terms of security cameras um, for its ability to deliver those um, crystal clear uh, quality images and to to, to be able to um, pick up details faces license plates at, at, at a further distance than was um than was of um than was possible before uh, so the, the the 4k camera although the resolution numbers are only doubled over what the two megapixel camera is it it actually delivers four times the video clarity so hence the move from two megapixels to eight megapixels um, but the resolution is only doubled okay um, Craig, do you want to talk a little bit about OMVIF? I know this is your, um, this is one of your, one of your, um, PS the resistances. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, uh, we get asked about this all the time. What is OMVIF? So in the, uh, surveillance world, it was kind of, um, kind of everybody collaborated together to try and think about a way that IP surveillance could move forward while being able to integrate with other devices. And, and obvious is really what's come out of that. And that, that means that you can have a camera and you can have an NVR from different brands and they'll still be able to work with each other. It might not be every single feature, it might just be the stream itself from the camera. And then, then obviously the NVR is able to, to understand this stream because it's OnVIF compliant. And that's what OnVIF is. So every OnVIF generally has multiple profiles. So profile S is what you would use for streaming and all of our cameras are OnVIF profile S. Um, and what, what that means is uh, have a think about what kind of vendors that you want to use, because it might be that you want to do something really fancy and maybe the hardware that we supply might be uh, good for most people, but not, not what you're looking for in terms of maybe ANPR. So if you've ever driven into a um, maybe a supermarket or something like that, uh, or, or any kind of parking lot, and it automatically recognizes your license plate and then it allows you in and then you book you out. All these booking systems have to work together. So where maybe our NVR might not be able to do that, certainly what we can have is uh, cameras that will allow you to do that. And then 
there are many different third party software vendors and things like that that allow you to do this piece. Um, another thing would be uh, people counting. So walking into a building, counting every person that comes through, making sure that, that how many people are already in the building, how many people walked out. Certainly very good for analytics. So uh, those who are trying to understand just what kind of maybe in a busy supermarket or, or a big environment like that, like a, like a theater, you want to know what kind of footfall you're getting in terms of traffic coming in every day. Um, this was these small things in security, especially especially the big um, big security vendors. Um, they all have to mesh together, and that's what Onvif does. It allows you to to have this open platform that all integrates together. Um, so I, I did mention that there's a few things we can do, a few things we can't do. Certainly the footfall piece, we've always been able to do at D-Link. Um, the ANPR is something that we generally kind of uh, work together with other partners for, um, but certainly if you if you ever have a project like that, speak to us. So because there's a lot that we know, there's a lot we can do, and always we are we are working with other really good companies as well to make sure that you've got that full piece and of the puzzle for for whatever project you're working on. Excellent. Um, just before we move on to the next slide, just to mention any questions, um, type them into the sidebar um, and we'll get to those at the end. I, I forgot, I'm, I'm out of practice, I do apologise. Um, it's been about four months since my last webinar, so, um, um, but if you do have any questions, just pop them in the sidebar and, and we'll pick them up at, at the end of the webinar for you. Okay. So now looking looking at the individual um, models, um, I mean we've we've probably ruined the surprise, and we've we've talked about the different models <laughs> and the megapixels. But I mean it's nice to have a picture with three cameras that look absolutely exactly the same because because our our, our cameras do because this is the uniformity um, that that we've we've chosen to create, and um, I, I think I, I think it works it works really well. Um, and they, they they do share a lot of features, hence why I haven't done six individual slides for each one um, uh, uh, of these three bullet cameras and then the three dome cameras that will follow up. Uh, each, each of these models feature um, H.265 video compression, which is, uh, which is my favorite because it's the smallest file size without losing um, any sort of um, level of um, detail within the video and allowing you to uh, keep your videos for longer, uh, having to pay less uh, for your storage solutions, your cloud solutions. Um, it's important to note on this slide that only the 8 megapixel model, the DCS4718E, is motorized. Uh, the others aren't motorized. Um, so if you do need that solution, then that is the that is the model to to go for. Um, any, anything you want to to add on these, Craig? I mean, we've a little bit. Just uh, yeah, just a little quote, just just on that motorized piece. Um, so yeah. I just mentioned about EMPR and things like that. Um, so um, imagine this: you're you, you have a camera, it's installed at night time, and and you're looking over some car park or, or maybe underground car park or something like that, and car drives in, obviously it's got its high beam on. Um, what will happen is that will probably shine into the camera. Now on a camera that might be just standard, um, what can you do? The, the light shining in there, you're blinded. But with a motorized camera, what it's able to do is actually able to adjust the lens and see if it can actually uh, change and, and re refocus the lens to try and get an image past that, that bright beam. So that's the difference between a motorized and a non-motorized device. It's very good for that underground and nighttime environments um, and very good for uh, certainly license plate recognition and things like that, where obviously you have trucks, you have lorries, all these things are very much in terms of uh, different sizes, different structures. So if you're looking at a piece, that motorized piece um, allows it to refocus and make sure you always got that sharp image if you're looking at moving traffic and things like that. Mm, very good point there, very good point. Um, and and as, as I said, the, the same applies to the dome cameras. It, it is only the eight megapixel model that, that comes with um, the motorization here. Uh, the, the difference between the dome cameras and the, the bullet cameras is that these cameras are, are vandal proof. 
Um, they they are IK IK ten rated, um, so um, fully baseball bat resistant. Or well, don't don't try it. Just um, um, <laughs> know that we have the, the the certificates for that. Um, and the same the same as we talked about before. Eight megapixels, four megapixels, and and the two megapixel vo mo um, models are available. And yes, they they all do look the same to create that uniform um, look there. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I think that's another piece of the puzzle. I mean, it's yeah, uh, yeah. it's very easy to overlook, but when you've got lots of different looking cameras and things like that, it doesn't really make a building look very nice. And, and you know what, so, Craig? And, and, when, when you're building a PowerPoint, you can just copy the same image three times. So I like it. Even better. <laughs> even better. <laughs> um, just to, just to briefly touch on the accessories, uh, we have we have a pole mount, which is is just for the bullet models. Uh, there is a wall mount bracket which will fit both models, and then we have a junction box which is which is just for the dome cameras. Um, there's different uh, there's there's obviously advantages to each one, Craig. The, the, does the junction box add some additional tilt and um, tilt and angles that the dome camera can do, or it does, and, and it means that the cable can be trunked a lot easier as well, um, and you can put it in slightly more discreet places and, and things like that. Mm. Uh, I think what's really important about this piece is that uh, we have standardized accessories now. So whereas before we had lots of different models and maybe that model looks slightly different to that model, that means that the brackets that came with it normally are for that model. Now, obviously, as a vendor, it's very difficult for us to know how many people are going to want brackets. So generally, that piece means that you don't do as many, you don't make as many accessories as you would as a camera, because otherwise you'd be left with a lot of waste a lot of leftover accessories that, that, that don't sell obviously that's this is a vendor piece we're talking about yeah. but ultimately yeah. what that means down the line is that at some point you might buy a camera and it might be very difficult to source the bracket for it because we might have run out or things like that it's a very real problem mm. um so by by having all of our cameras that are exactly the same and they're all brand new it means that we we can have an abundance of accessories to sell you so that you've always got a bracket you don't have to wait for it to come you don't have to try and look for different places to try and find an old bracket. You, we're going to have the brackets for you, uh, and that means that your installations are going to be much easier. Yeah, that's a that's a very real benefit of um, of, of this standard approach. I think. Yeah. Uh, moving on, let's have a look at the camera features and software. Um, so. One of the good things is the auto and, and manual firmware updates. And um, I, I chatted with Craig when we did a run through about this um, because I didn't, I didn't fully understand how important this was. But um, um, how Craig explained this to me is that you, you can wait to upgrade your cameras until there's an upgrade available for the NVR, if, if, if that's what's coming, or um, you, you don't have to do everything at the same time, you can test it out and, and bits like that. So whereas on, on, on a normal thing like your phone, having automatic firmware updates is just like, well, yeah, uh, that's, that's not, not really a big thing. But on, on, on these camera models, it's, it, it's actually a bigger thing than, than I actually first realized when you, when you think and you, you analyze about the issues of, of, of having this network of making a change uh, to the network, then um, being able to manually um, do firmware updates could be a, a very, very big advantage for, for our range. Yeah, absolutely, Alan. And and I think just to just to understand why we wanted to keep this part in for this presentation, very real problem we have as, as security vendors is that um, when you install a camera, we expect that camera to work for a very long time. Hmm. Let's, let's, let's face it, it doesn't do much. It sits up there on a wall. It's not like a moving piece. It doesn't have vents or anything like that. So we expect it to sit up there for a very long time. So you install it today, maybe it's going to be there in another 10 years time. Now things grow. Companies grow, buildings grow, structures change. Sometimes things even stop working for, for, for another reason. Maybe there's a surge, maybe there's a lightning strike, something happens along the lines. And then what you're left with is, you, okay, I have to get rid of this piece of the puzzle. I have to get rid of this camera and I have to purchase a new camera. So you purchase a new camera and then you're struggling now to try and understand why you can't get your new camera connected to your old system when it's very similar to how it was. 
And part of the reason for that is that you get these device packs. So maybe we bring out an MVR and bring out a camera. And then in a year or two's time, we bring out another camera that comes out. And that means that the NVR has to be updated to understand that new camera that gets plugged into it. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe, maybe the cameras are newer and the NVR is older. It's all of these things. And it just makes for a very frustrating experience sometimes because you have to match up the device packs with the cameras. And if everything is always updated, then everything can, can always be plug and play. And that, that, that I think, is the reason that we want to go with this. Mm. It comes automatically out the box, but you can obviously turn it off. It's, it's completely up to you. I personally would think it's it's a great thing to have because no matter what happens in life, uh, you'll be able to plug in one of our D-Link cameras and our D-Link MVR, and you should have that experience of being able to plug it in, instantly found and up and running very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Vertical mode or corridor modes, whichever you, you want to call it. Very, very useful little uh, feature of this camera. Um, it's, it, it's funny when, when, you, when you see people who take photos on social media and they use their iPhone and they take them with the phone the wrong way round and, and how pedantic people can get about um, pictures facing the wrong way and all that kind of stuff. Well, um, corridor mode al allows you to cor correct that and the, the pictures do a better job of illustrating what exactly corridor mode does than, than my words. But you can, you can clearly see that by changing the orientation of, of the camera, uh, you can see much further down this, this business's corridor. You can clearly see um, the, the guy there, the light, the, the exit sign, whereas in normal mode, um, that picture is much more truncated and the, the darkness right at the back of the picture make it a little bit harder to make any detail out. Um, so this is a, this is a very good um, feature for, for anybody who needs a vertically orientated stream or could make use of it. Yeah, so in the past, we probably would have installed a bullet camera in a situation like this in order to get that depth of field going down into the into the area the problem with that is when you install a bullet camera in in, in that kind of environment it's not always the best thing because um let's say for a hospital or, or like a police station or even something like that you do have to worry about vandalism too so yeah. having it having a, a dome camera that's able to look at that kind of distance now is very handy because it means that it's protected it's got this big hardened shell. No one's going to be able to break it or even turn it the other way because ultimately, you know, these yeah. these things are some parts of plastic, some parts of screw uh, for the bullet cameras. But um, so if it's high up, no one's going to touch a bullet camera, and that's absolutely fine. You can mm -hmm. certainly use a bullet camera to get a different angle and things like that, and that's what they're that's what we make them for. But in this kind of environment where it's low down, maybe in arm's reach, bullets uh, um, dome cameras are the way to go, and being able to focus that corridor is is very handy yeah it's um it's, it's a great point there craig about the not being able to tamper with a dome camera so much not 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 every time a camera is tampered with it's it's on purpose is it sometimes you might be putting up a ladder and catch the camera or um you, you um the bullet cameras just tend to stick out a little bit more than dome cameras don't they so um uh mm. that's that that's that that's an important thing to um and um, to take into consideration there so um uh, right uh camera log um may, may seem a little bit more boring than than corridor mode and megapixels and and everything like that but having easy access to your camera's data having a um a proper log of all the events that have happened and being able to um look at that log at, at any time refer back to it download it so that you can put it into excel uh, things like that, very, very, uh, very, very useful, very, very important, um, can allow you to scan through these documents a lot quicker if you do it in Excel rather than looking at it on a screen at, at, at one time. Um, so that's just 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 a little a, a little software in, um, improvement there that's um, going to be a bit of a time saver for, for many people who use these. Yeah, cameras. so it's so here's the thing in the, in our older cameras we didn't have the log like this hmm. um so it was really up to the nvr to record absolutely everything um so what happens when you have a problem with the nvr and you are trying to find something where it's uh, maybe it may an event has occurred maybe someone has even tampered with the nvr 
you're able to match up the camera log with the MVR log in this case and find out if anything has gone missing or anything else has happened in that area. Mm. Plus, you're, you're just able to see what camera has done and, and seen what. Um, and you can make more decision about whether that camera is in the right place if it's constantly getting events that it maybe you don't even want to get as well. Um, certainly, there are other features on cameras um, where you can mask at certain areas so that it doesn't look at that. Um, but it's not always possible in some in some areas. So yeah. the log helps us to try and get an, a, an idea of what we can do with the cameras and, and what it's seen, and and, and just makes you allow to allow you to make business decisions based upon that as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a great it's a great little feature. It's very very good to have on on them from now on. Uh, next up, and um, we have lens control. We we, we talked a lot about um, the 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 night vision. And um, on the motorized cameras only, um, so that's the the eight megapixel bullet or eight megapixel dome camera, you you can have the day night switch as either automatic or um, or manual. So it's just a little little click of this um, this button over there. So what that will do is that will um, switch between the two automatically rather than waiting for you to do it or if you don't want it set up as we did when we talked about the automatic firmware downloads um, you can leave it on, on manual and then you can change that yourself uh, when you uh, when you need to yeah absolutely and and there's some macro features as well so if something is too close up then the lens yes. can auto adjust but if you don't want the auto agents to lens to adjust you can certainly set the profile for it there. yes i recognize most of those little icons from my um from my samsung camera as well I, they're fairly standard aren't they so they are yeah yeah that's cool um okay the mvr um as as i said at the start as and, and as, as craig alluded to the the old d-link mvrs have been around for about three years um so here is the the shiny spangly new model which um we we're, we're looking we're looking around april may time uh, but with uh, with the situation where it is at the moment um you know ju just just inquire with us and and we'll be able to give you a, a better picture of when the new mvr is going to be available um it, it changes on on a day-to-day -day basis at the moment i'm sure you can um you you can imagine the uh, the, the situation and the um, the delays and the stock shortages um, around certain products, but we're doing our very best to get this this new item to you as soon as possible. Craig himself can't wait to to test this out. Um, yeah, I don't have one yet. <laughs> not, not, not not privileged to have one yet. <laughs> okay, Craig, we'll get you one as soon as we can. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. um, okay. So the reason I'm excited about this one, uh, Alan, is that um, it kind of changes everything. So you can yes. see we've got six, we've got quite a few sockets there, right? We've got 16 sockets, 16, ports, yeah. 16 cameras that we can plug in. These are all POE ports. So what we're actually talking about is we've got a built-in NVR with a switch as well. So we don't have to have a switch anymore mm. to power all of our cameras in 16 camera installation, which is great. Um, there is an uplink port if you do want to plug more cameras in. <coughs> and certainly if you, you'll need to use that to bridge it into the network anyway. Mm -hmm. um so it certainly is there there is an option there but um no longer do we need to think about a switch and how we're going to power these things that's really nice actually yeah. one of the reasons it's really nice is because sometimes sometimes you can plug cameras into an already existing network if it's a flat topology maybe it's an older one it can cause some problems mainly because you've got a lot of multicast traffic and things like that that are now bridging across your network um, and filling up your, uh, your uh, becoming less optimized on the network, more traffic, which means uh, a slower network topology. Um, so have, sometimes having cameras that are completely separate from the rest of your network is a good idea. Um, you might also have newer switches, uh, in which case you can certainly VLAN this off still, um, and, and you still have that independent piece. So you can make the NVR part of your network, but maybe not the cameras. So. Uh, it's a it's a really good change, I think, and it's much needed. You still have two HD ports, yep. So uh, uh, HDD port uh, drives. So um, if you combine this eight terabytes, two of those, so you've got sixteen terabytes of storage data. Nice. 
plus the fact that you've got H.265, which by itself means that you, you know, you're saving about anywhere between 30 to 50 percent in terms of storage anyway. So mm. compared to what our older MVRs, you're pretty much doubling that or tripling that even. So uh, there, there's a lot more storage that you can get on this. Um, necessarily, you don't have to have all of those, uh, all of that 16, you can have eight and you'd still be able to use that in RAID mode. Um, so what that means is you can have two hard drives that are in unison recording the same image, but what that will Just ultimately mean is that uh, if one of the hard drives fails, the other one is still got all the information there. So very handy to have that feature too. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's an all one solution, 120 watts in total. So it will support any 802.3 AF devices, which all of us are. Um, so it's great. It's, it's, it's perfect for, for what we're after, I think. The, the only thing I'm disappointed, Craig, is that you didn't mention the VGA port. Oh, did I not? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, without that, what would we do? <laughs> I do, I do find it strange when I still see VGA ports on stuff, but I suppose there's a lot of people who still use VGA as a primary connection or, or a VGA to a HDMI or, or, or something along those lines. I, I actually have a VGA to HDMI cable. I have no idea where I got it, but I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough. As promised, um, we're, we're now going to, um, we've got a couple of slides on switches. So um, we're going to talk about long range PoE, <coughs> pardon me, um, which is <coughs> for which we have um, a couple of dedicated products, um, but we also have enabled now on one of our industrial um, switches. Um, so the ability to um, have a camera 250 meters away from our DIS200G uh, model, um, it's, it, it's, it's a real game changer um, for anybody who works in a harsh environment uh, and will allow them to have cameras a, a, a great distance away from from the switches, which um, um, could be very very useful for people in large warehouses, especially. Yeah, uh, it not to be underestimated the uh, usefulness of being able to extend further away. Uh, I, I tried. Over, I tried over, my best, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> who would double the net? I, I can't tell you, Alan, how, how yeah. difficult it is sometimes where I, I've done wireless site surveys uh, over the last few years. Certainly, most of these were probably before lockdown, I'll be honest. But um, what I've seen is that everybody wants a camera at some point in the worst position you could possibly <laughs> ask for. Just on, and, on the building across the road, but I don't want to pay for a POE <laughs> injector or an additional stuff. Yeah. That's right. You see, you see that tree over there? I want one up there. Okay, fine. <laughs> so, and I'm not even kidding. This, this, this happens. Yes. Um, certainly, certainly, where you're watching a perimeter and you want to watch down, make sure that all of your fencing is covered um, in a large business park. It's yeah, it's obviously very much needed. Um, but getting that cable to run there is is mm. at 100 meters is is non-existent. So then you you start thinking about okay, well, how else can I get over there? If I can't get any power over there, that limits my options. Now, that's the thing about industrial switches as well. This is coming from an industrial switch. So not only is it 250 meters from the industrial switch, it also is able to use power from different areas. And what I'm talking about is things like lamp posts, hmm. but which yeah. when you start in the industrial area, when we start doing industrial switches, my my usefulness in terms of doing these wireless site surveys opened up dramatically because it was now a case where I could say, well, do you own that lamppost over there? And if they do, if the business part owns that lamppost, what you can do is you can pull power from that lamppost, mm. put this industrial switch into an IP rated box, put that up at the top of the pole because it's a pole anyway, it's a lamppost. And then you can plug your cameras in to 250 meters away, covering all of the perimeter of that area. Mm. It's, it's a massive change, game changer when it yeah. comes to getting your cameras in, into these places. Mm. Being Because power is, is the hardest thing to actually to, to, to renew in, in, a, in an area where there is none there. It's very difficult. Yeah. So it's, it's a great feature. It's a great feature. We already did the switch. 
to know that it goes 250 meters when we did our testing was was a real benefit for us hmm. and now having that kind of switch and that kind of camera means that we can go anywhere with these devices is very very simple to uh, to try and do any kind of specification so along along with the industrial range we've actually produced um these were released um q4 last year a couple of long range poe um switches which um would have been part of um would have been part of a previous uh, webinar that we did when we talked about the the, the full portfolio that D-Link has but if you if you if you didn't join us for that one then um these new DSS so so they are surveillance switches um are both now available so we've got the the nine port version and the eighteen port version, and similarly to the um, the previous slide, the the distance on the switch is two hundred and fifty meters. But if you do need uh, an extension upon that, you can chain four PoE extenders up and look at a distance of six hundred and fifty meters away uh, from the switch, which. Um, uh, that that that's that's a fair old um, chunk of coverage there, Craig. Is it not? <laughs> that, yeah, it's massive. That's that's really really massive. Mm. Um, obviously, a lot of these injectors would be run internally. Yeah. Uh, well, who's going to run this sort of thing? Schools for sure. Absolutely, yeah. schools for sure. I've done some secondary schools in the past, uh, even quite recently actually, uh, which are just phenomenal in size and the amount of uh, square acres that they possess. Um, thinking about where the course switches in a school like that and how many separate buildings there are universities and things like that getting getting these cameras all around um is a big distance which means you start having separate cabinets and things like that and sometimes you don't want a separate cabinet somewhere else because you have to put it in a really awkward place or maybe there's just no security protocols in that area you don't want to run it there um, so being able to just plug in a couple of injectors and, and do these cameras is, is is very beneficial very beneficial for large large scale projects. Well, I say large scale projects, I mean about distance and, and square coverage, square foot coverage, very handy. Um, a, apologies for me if you could hear the neighboring ice cream man who is taking advantage of the slightly better weather at the moment in the background. I did mute myself, but um, his siren may go off again. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of working from home, eh, Craig? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, so just um, um, just to illustrate there, the the, the normal length is two hundred and fifty meters. Um, so so you're looking at um, good coverage over an area like a car park or or, or something along those lines. So these switches are, are available if if you want any more information on them. It's uki hyphen sales at dealing dot com, um, and one of our friendly and helpful salespeople will be sure to to help you out with those. Yeah. Um. Nucleus Connect Hub Plus. So we have um, we have mentioned this um, slightly uh, before. Uh, this isn't coming until um, H2. Um, so this is a, a, a sneak preview of a device that's going to be um, available. Although H2, it's it's only three months away. So um, um, it will be with us uh, quicker 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 than we can imagine. This year has gone incredibly. I don't know if the same for you, Craig. But this year has gone incredibly quickly for myself. Um, I can't it believe has. it's March already. It's 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 crazy. Um, well, it's been a year since we started working from home. In, in wow! The long run, yes, in yeah. a couple of weeks it will be the it will be the anniversary. Yeah, yeah. I'd, what what are we going to do to celebrate? Work from home? <laughs> I think so. I might I might change my position on the couch somehow. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Just just as a one off, just as a celebration. <laughs> yeah, I might just spin it towards the window for a change, you know, mix it up. <laughs> nice. I, I like it. I like it. Um so you can see see on the here that um as as we alluded to earlier, the nucleus connect. I mean, it's 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 a hub. It it it, it really is the, the hub. Um everything will plug into it that you see on the screen on the screens here and it becomes that device that integrates everything into one um, so you can connect it to our range of nucleus connect ap's um are the nucleus connect switches available craig or is that coming soon i know that's coming this year that's coming this year and yes. the first ones we'll have is our dgs 1210s and yes. there's going to be our current gnf revisions that we've uh, had out for the last couple of years Fantastic. Um, so a firmware update to those devices mm. means that you, 
be able to centrally manage those devices with the Nucleus Connect platform. Yeah, that's brilliant. And then um, my dealing cloud cameras will connect. So, so those home devices, but don't uh, never underestimate just how good those those cameras are for your home devices. They're all they're, they're all 1080p. We do have a a 2K model um, coming soon, an outdoor pan and um, tilt, which um, I'm sure will be featured in an upcoming webinar. And then the the standard commercial cameras, which are the ones that we've been talking about today. So this. This hub really can integrate the full portfolio of dealing products together, um, allowing you easy management on the one platform. Um, when, we, when we've talked about the, the, the DNH100 in the past, Greg, we've talked about how um, the advantages over running this kind of thing on a laptop. Um, I, I'm assuming that would be the same for, for, for this hub. Um, so no, no blue screen of death and, and, and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's that's the main benefit. We obviously have the Nucleus Connect uh, software. Mm. Um, it's it's to be confirmed whether that will actually run any cameras. I don't think it will at this point. I think it's going to be primarily just for the DNH two hundred that will support the cameras, sure. and that's really because we've uh, built that into the hardware itself. Um, but yes, uh, certainly the software is um, obviously able to to control and tying in with with single sign on. So what that single sign-on means is that you'll share the same sign-on login for our Nucleus Cloud portfolio with our Nucleus Connect uh, devices so that you can actually see on the cloud when you log in um, just some basic information that's been reported from those devices. So think of it like, um, well, I mean, this is the reason why we call it Nucleus because Nucleus is the centralized part. So you log into Nucleus Cloud and you'll see all of your spokes that are on the edge, if you're into these multi-tenancies, so if you're a reseller and you've got multiple sites, you can have one page, one panel that shows you what's up and down and all the information and how to log into each one. Hmm. So just um, just a little bit more on on the unit itself. There, um, we won't we won't go through this in in any sort of great depth. Um, it 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 just has the one. Um, hard drive bay on this unit and it will support SATA drives up to five terabytes and still still plenty of storage especially in the x265 um, format so we wouldn't be be, be too worried about um, the, the storage level that, that comes on this device uh, you, you can connect up to 50 different devices to this so there's plenty of plenty of room there um, and for, for, for expansion plenty plenty of device coverage across the piece so yeah so for those who think that they could perhaps get away with less storage but want to integrate that into yes. the rest of the network yeah. this is what it's really for so it gives you a few days of footage perhaps um so if anything does happen you can certainly grab that footage very quickly but it also means that your day-to-day -day services that are rolled out are very quick one install does all the cameras does all the wi-fi and switches as well because we'll have that switches that switching piece uh, this year yep uh, one of the one of the little extras that come with it are um, the Nucleus Protect app. Um, so the app will allow you to sync um, sync up with the Nucleus Connect servers via the DNH um, two hundred. Just just very very handy to have this kind of app on either your phone or or, or an iPad to manage it. Um, when when Craig does the um, shows the Nucleus. Uh, app on, on on an iPad or a phone. It's it, it's it, one of the one of the great advantages is its simplicity and how easy it is to use. Um, and um, so being able to change stuff on the fly. Maybe you're out of the office. Maybe you're uh, away from either your Connect Hub or your M. Um, you you can manage on on the fly, as it were. Uh, the camera surveillance will allow you to view live. It will allow you to play back. It will allow you to have a look at recordings. Or, or, or while you're out of the office, uh, which is um, a very, very useful little app there. Okay, um, coming towards the end now. So well, I thought I'd just show a couple of um, couple of screenshots of the uh, the GUI in action for the Nucleus Connect to just show how simple it is. And uh, and, and really with, with, with any sorts of GUI, it's the familiarity. So 
Uh, what, what always impresses me about these is um, the bars down the side reflect, they, they drop down. It just looks like something that's very, very easy to manage uh, and use. Um, and, and as you can see here, these are various shots of our, um, of our head office. Um, Craig and I are very je um, jealous that they have a table tennis table, um, uh, for, for, for instance. Um, we'll, we'll be looking to get one installed in the HQ sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, and the amount so, of plants as well is, is is very noticeable in our head office. It's a very green office there, isn't it? <laughs> it is very green. And it's it's nice to actually see what it's going to look like as well mm. when you, before you purchase it because it's it's it can you can be laden with some very bad GUI sometimes. And of course, this is obviously one that we've worked quite hard on to to make sure it's nice and nice and uh, easy to manipulate. But uh, again. Like I said, tying into that other piece, what you could be able to do is shut off PoE ports and things like that. So you actually yeah. be able to turn the cameras on and off because it's all tied into our switches as well. So very, it's very, it's very clean looking. It looks very easy to manage. And um, yes, it's, but me, I'm, I'm sure we will report back on it once we get one to play with, Craig. But um, all signs are very, very positive for, for this. But me, so. Um, in, in in summation, just to just to run very very quickly over the the kinds of businesses um, um, that, that that we would suggest targeting for um, surveillance solutions and why what why dealing cameras um, are, are so good for them. Um, so if if you're a small to medium sized business and you're after a very easy to set up remote monitoring surveillance system, then dealing uh, is, is it should be very high up on your list of choices there, as as, as Craig talked about OMVIF, the the implications for for OMVIF mean that if um if for instance you like the D-Link MVR, you like the motorized eight megapixel camera, but you've already got an MVR from a different company, as long as that MVR supports OMVIF, you can switch over to D-Link cameras, and that's that that's a major thing um, that we push. You, we 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 don't. We don't limit you to, to the one retailer here. So it, it really is about that flexibility and um, and the, the software functions that we're working on and all those um, other bits and bobs will make ours uh, very appealing. So don't think that just because you've got a different vendor's switches in your network that you can't use our our cameras. Um, that's 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 what OMVIF is from OMVIF is and what what it's for. Um, as we talked about with the 4K, the, the, the high standard, the, the, the great resolution that it provides, facial and number plate recognitions are even easier. And um, with regards to the improvement in the lenses, uh, we're making that sort of detail available at night now. So great, great improvements there are, are across the range. Um, if you're a business that needs to do 24 seven monitoring, uh, there's, as, as, as I mentioned, there's a lot of people working from home. There's a few people in offices and businesses are being un unoccupied for longer stretches of time than the usual. Um, even as per the, the government's timeline, I think that a lot of people will still be working at home even, even after we come out of lockdown. So there will be longer periods of time when your office is empty um, and you know we know f f from experience we 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 are a networking company we have a lot of networking equipment in our in our office and we obviously want to keep a, a close eye on that um great, yeah, great. Funny, funny you say that alan because uh i'm actually in the office today um just doing a few things in the lab here yep we actually have an abandoned building um just just across from us um which is an abandoned complex for it still looks neat and tidy <laughs> right next to a railway track and uh, I, I can see from the last time I was here that there's, there's obviously graffiti and things that have that mm -hmm. have come up. Um, may not necessarily have happened before before lockdown. So there are a lot of places that do need monitoring now. Yeah. Um, so it, it's probably a very good time for us to to update all of these uh, these devices too. Because even if you're if you're not going to the office every day, or maybe you're you're a business, you're you're in your own business. Um, it's certainly always a good idea to keep an eye on things and, and the perimeters as well, because you never know what could happen. Hundred percent. Yeah, I did definitely echo that um, that sentiment. Um, as Craig mentioned, monitoring areas with difficult lighting, making use of the the new motorized cameras makes that even easier. 
uh, and the HDR um, implications on our cameras uh, that make warehouse windows or building entrances even easier um, to, to, to view now. So uh, the, the improvements, the improvements to these cameras are all very well thought, thought through and are very real and tangible um, to, um, to, to businesses. Uh, we, we talked about the um, we talked about the vandal proof. We didn't talk about the um, weather proof of the cameras, Craig. Um, I might be wrong. Am I thinking IP sixty five on most of our cameras? Or yeah, I think it's IP sixty seven rating on some of the yes. uh, domes. Perhaps I think it is right. IP sixty seven. Um, ultimately, it means anything in the UK is going to be weather proof. Hmm. Um, pretty much, you would be able to spray a hose at it for a prolonged period of time. Uh, and it would still be able to survive that kind of treatment. So that's what IP67 rating is. Yeah. yeah. Um, last, last but not least, thing to mention: um, typical, typical sales webinar. I'm sorry. Um, we, 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 we do have TAS options available on our products. So um, what TAS means is tech as a service, and we're we're very appreciative that businesses don't have the funds if they haven't been open or as the economy has, um, you know, the Chancellor said today shrunk 10% in the last year. Um, so maybe having the spare cash to upgrade your network as much as you, as you would like to, and uh, maybe that isn't an option for you at the moment. And, and that's why we've, we've teamed up with a couple of our distributors to offer a TAS option. Uh, and what that means is that you can um, pay, uh, pay monthly for, for a solution that you would usually pay upfront for so basically shifting uh, fr from from an opex model to, to, to a capex model uh, so in order you, you could upgrade all of your security system and, and pay a monthly a monthly fee for that rather than um, shelling everything out up front um, so if if it is something you want to consider that there, there is that option there as well but I don't want to dwell too too, too much on that okay um, that's that's pretty much it for the surveillance part um just to mention uh wednesday the 24th is the next webinar and what we're going to be talking about is wired versus wireless networks uh, we're going to be mainly focusing on security because security of networks um it was kind of forgotten in 2020 and it's now back on the agenda in 2021 and um, how wide networks can help you um, with extra security, whether it's a home network, a business network, or a working from home network. So I think that's that's going to be um, a, a, a very good watch. So if, if you haven't um, uh, signed up for that one, you can just go on to the D-Link website and click the webinars tab if you're, if you're at all interested in that. Okay. Um, so there's no there's no questions, Craig. We must have done a fantastic job in in talking about every little part of our camera range. Well, it seems to be that way. <laughs> so yeah, I think it, I think for most of it, it's quite self-explanatory. But uh, certainly, if you do have any questions, send them our way. We'll be happy to have a look. Yep. Contact details on the screen. Um, 0208 955 9000 if you want to speak to us, or uki-sales at dlink.com if email is your um, is your thing. There okay, is... We just had one question, Alan, come in. Uh, that's from uh, someone who says, "How can I get a quote for the new cameras?" Um... You can speak to your friendly neighborhood distributor. Uh, we, we work with um, Exertis, Tech Data, or um, Ingram Micro, or you can um, phone the aforementioned um, telephone number or the aforementioned email address. So, so well-timed there with the question. Um, if, if you'd like to speak to us at D-Link, um, we'll, we'll, we'll make a recommendation for you, um, then uki-sales at dlink.com or, or the phone number. Um, just to pay attention to, we, we have a direct chat link as well, and I'm, I'm not expecting you to memorize that, uh, but um, it, will, it will be in the PDF that comes out after this um, presentation is released. So you can just click that link and you'll be set up with a, di a, a direct live chat with, with one of our salespeople. So just another way that you can um, you can get hold of our salespeople there. And um, so either you can either talk directly to your friendly distributor, but probably best for you to um, talk to either Mark or Rob in our sales team 
um, and they will they they will set you up. They will listen to what your needs are and and um, probably do most of the work for you. So so that would probably be the the preferential mode um, to do that. Okay. Um, I think I think that's about it for this week. Um, anything more to add, Craig? I think we've we've pretty much covered everything there. I think we've covered everything, and that we was worried that we wouldn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we we yeah, always it's, find it's always the case. We always find something. Our, our products are a lot more interesting when you get down to the to, to the brass tacks than the, than on the face value, don't they? And um, twenty eight. I... 28 PowerPoint slides always takes a little bit of time to go through. <laughs> it does. But I, I, I'll be honest with you, I think this was a much needed soft uh, refresh of, of our network um, for our cameras. So we're very happy with this. So fingers crossed you guys will be too. Agreed. Okay. Um, thanks a lot then. We will end this webinar here. Hopefully I'll see you in three weeks time for the wired versus wireless webinar. Um, if, if, if you can't make it live, just sign up and you will get a copy sent in the post. All of our webinars are also posted on the, um, uh, on the D-Link YouTube channel. Um, and um, uh, so, so you can go back and have a look at the past ones there. Uh, okay, thanks very much for your time. Um, see you all in a few weeks time.